I think in, in one way or another, um, I might be wrong about this, <laughs> but I think uh, everybody on some instinctive level um, knows that it's possible to have well-being all of the time. There may not be clarity as to what exactly well-being truly means or truly is or how to enjoy that well-being all of the time. But I feel like everybody on some level knows that that is a potential for human beings. And um, hence, every single action we take, every single endeavor we undertake, every single motivation we have at its basis is an attempt to arrive at that well-being. And so, um, everybody is 100% committed to it. Because that's, that's what everybody is engaged in, is through one means or another, or a combination of many different means that we've learned, we're trying to arrive at well-being. And we also want that well-being to be stable and not coming and going. And uh, so in the Balanced View teaching, uh, we're introduced to open intelligence, which is, like I said earlier, it's the space of mind itself in which all of our life circumstances, all of our thoughts, emotions, all of our physical sensations, everything we see, everything we hear, the space of mind is the ground in which all of that display is occurring. And that ground of being, that ground of all experience, open intelligence, that is the reliable source of, of, of well-being that we all, on one level, know is available to us. So the, sim the simple practice of balanced view is only one practice, in a way. <laughs> the soul practice, as in S-O-L-E, not S-O-U-L, of balanced view is to rest as that basis of mind, open intelligence itself, the clear knowing quality of mind itself, to rest as that for a short moment, whenever you remember, and then to repeat it whenever you remember. So just while we're here now for this hour, we can do that together. Whenever you remember, no matter what's going on in your mind or how you feel or if you feel good or bad or neutral or you're worried about something or you're trying to figure out what I'm saying or whatever it is that might be going on, whenever you remember to, just allow yourself to completely relax, to completely rest, mind and body. Allow yourself to make no effort whatsoever. Don't make any effort to feel good. Don't make any effort to feel better. Don't make any effort to not feel bad. Just completely relax without any motive, without any expectation for what you want out of it or what ought to happen. And then the next time you remember, again, just completely relax mind and body doesn't matter what's going on in your mind, just allow yourself to let to relax. So some, many people find it um, uh, easiest to recognize open intelligence or to recognize this aware quality of mind that's at the basis of all experience. Many people find it easier to recognize initially um, by just stopping thinking. So we can all do that together now. And 
you don't always feel like you can, but let's just try. So all together we just stop thinking for a few moments. And you notice that when you do that, that open intelligence remains. The brilliant, clear, knowing quality of mind itself remains. Whether you're thinking or not thinking, open intelligence remains. (laughs) Everything self-resolves. Every single experience we have ever had has resolved completely of its own accord. And open intelligence is always left. Similar to how in a mirror, the reflections in a mirror are always changing and different things happening. And what's always left is the mirror itself. And in fact, all that ever was was the mirror itself. (laughs) The reflections in themselves could not be said to have a self-generated existence. The reflections can only be found to be the mirror itself. And similarly, all emotions, thoughts, experiences, etc. can only be found to be mind itself, this stable ground of all experience that can be relied on no matter how you feel. So, um, when you rest as open intelligence for a short moment, recognize open intelligence for a short moment, usually the first thing you'll notice is a relief. There's a relief from the running on the hamster wheel of trying to rearrange how we feel, trying to not feel certain things, trying to feel certain other things. That effort causes us a lot of suffering. And when we relax that effort, what we notice is that we feel relieved of it. In the same way that you would feel relieved if... um, I used to do a lot of long distance running, but I never enjoyed it. I just my body is quite good, you know, my family does it and stuff, so my genes are probably quite good for it. Long, limmy man with <laughs> slow twitch muscle fibres. So I used to do it because I wanted to show that I was good at it. I didn't really enjoy it. But I just saw it as I was running, I was just thinking, ah, oh, ah, oh, it'd be so nice to just stop running. <laughs> 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 and um, it's very similar to that. So you're making all kinds of effort to rearrange your emotions, to rearrange your thoughts, all sorts of effort to try to feel better. But ironically, it's that effort itself that causes you suffering. So short moments of complete rest repeated many times is a very gentle, very kind practice, it's a very kind and very direct intervention to our tendency to struggle with ourselves, essentially. And so that relief, just return to that relief for a brief moment, whenever you remember. There's nothing in your mind that you need to sort out. Just completely relax. You may feel very compelled to sort out the contents of your mind because that's what we've been doing, most of us, for most of our lives. But um, it's completely safe not to, I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. You can completely rest. You can completely enjoy that relief. And you can return to it again and again whenever you remember. And what happens is that over time those moments of relief, they become slowly, sometimes without you noticing, they become like small islands of relief through the flow of your every day. And those islands become continents (laughs) with 
and then it becomes more that you notice when you're not allowing yourself to be at ease. So like that, in a very natural way, your familiarity with the well-being that is your birthright as open intelligence grows and grows. And um, a balanced view is essentially a support system for you to, uh, to have that process be as enjoyable and natural and effortless as possible. And um, so the balanced view basically consists of four um, mainstays that's made available for you, four um, ways that you can support yourself. So the first one is the practice, the practice of short moments of recognizing open intelligence repeated many times. And then there's teachers like Michelle and I, who you can come every week or whenever you like to these meetings and ask for any support that you like, ask for any clarification you want about the practice. Um, and uh, community. That's very supportive to have friends who are engaging in the same practice and walking the same path, so to speak. And then the teaching itself. So we have... Um, many teachings in Balanced View that you can, that you can join. And um, if, you, if you're quite new to this and you, and you feel like it's something that you'd like to explore more, um, then I would recommend coming back several times to, to this open meeting, just to settle in and get more and more of a sense of it and to to experiment with the practice when you go home for the week and come back and let us go, know how it goes. And uh, ultimately, if you, if you feel like it's something you want to uh, truly explore, then I would recommend to consider doing the, the 12 empowerments. That's kind of the, um, the foundational uh, platform training of Balanced View. Uh, that's extremely powerful and um, leaves you very clear about how to continue to gain assurance in open intelligence. It makes it very clear. And it makes it very clear for you where you're at and how you can support yourself, uh, how you can empower yourself in open intelligence. Thank you so much, everyone.